numbers in Scripture are used with precision and intelligence. There are no accidental numbers in the Word of God. Hello everyone, Martin Zender here at the Revelation series. The broadcasts from the laundry room here are going to be coming to an end. I'm not satisfied with the visuals or the sound, so enjoy it while you can. I'm actually facing the washer and dryer this time. I know exciting news for you, uh, rather than having it at my back. It's not quite as comforting to have to be facing them, uh, to have them covering you, to have the washer and dryer at your back, watching your back. It's a great comfort as you can well imagine. So in Hebrew, the number seven, let's start with that before we get to the number six. The number seven is very important in the Hebrew language. Lots of things are associated with the number seven. It comes from a root word in the Hebrew, which means to satisfy. And this fits most contexts where it is used. Seven is God's satisfaction. It is God content. And of course, even when we say God is content, we're speaking in a figure of speech because God does not have human emotions. But he relates to us as though he has human emotions. Once again, a figure of speech known as anthropomorphia. So in the unveiling, how many times have we seen the number seven. It is loaded, loaded with the number seven. A few examples. There are seven ecclesias. There are seven lampstands. There are seven stars, seven spirits, seven torches, seven seals, seven horns, seven eyes, seven messengers, seven trumpets, seven calamities, seven bowls, seven diadems, seven heads, seven thunders. Are you getting the idea that seven is a really big number to God, or as Ed Sullivan would say, we're going to run a big number. Uh, wasn't very good. Uh, and you've heard me teach before on the seven days of the week. It's a full cycle of satisfactory accomplishment. And the seven days of the week is based, why do we have seven days of the week? It's based on the seven days of creation. God took six days to create the earth, and he ends on the sixth day with man, six man. Six is the number of humanity. So it's no coincidence. It is no coincidence that 666 is the number of humanity, and it is the number of the wild beast. Because again, this comes at the end of man's day. Look, at the end of the six days of creation came Adam, came the man. Adam, at the end of the six days of creation, there's a parallel here. At the end of the 6,000 years of humanity's rule, there comes a man, a man of lawlessness. You might call him antithetical to Adam. Christ is the perfect opposer to Adam. He, of course, saves everyone Adam loses. He's the second Adam, the last Adam. But this man of lawlessness is the false Adam and the false Christ. This just occurred to me. He's not only the false Christ, but the false Adam. Adam, meaning humanity, he's the fullness, as I said yesterday, of everything that man can accomplish apart from God. And again, it happens at the end. At the end of the six-day creation cycle, God created Adam. At the end of the 6,000 years of human rule, the man of lawlessness will come on the scene. So, and at the end of the week, at the end of the week, there's a rest day. There's a stopping. And the stopping is a good thing because it introduces us to God's stopping. On the seventh day, God rested. That's a bad translation. God doesn't get tired. On the seventh day, God stopped from his works. And then we had a period of respite, a period of quiet. And the Jews were to celebrate this day. It's called the Sabbath. It means to stop. It means a stopping. In the book of Hebrews, it says there remains a day of stopping for the people of God. I believe in that case, the term day is a figure of speech for the 1,000 year kingdom. Because as you know, I see another parallel between the 6,000 years of man and the 1,000 year kingdom. A day is as a thousand years to God, 
Isn't that interesting? Because we've had 6,000 years of rule, and this corresponds with the six days of creation. We had a day of stopping the Sabbath. We're going to have a long 1,000-year, quote, day of stopping during the millennium. So on every hand, we find satisfaction. Seven ecclesias, seven lampstands, seven seals, seven trumpets. You might say, how is that satisfaction? At the end of the seventh, seventh trumpets, God is satisfied that the earth has been disciplined for its edification and there are no more trumpets needed. The seven bowls, satisfaction. Um, the seven, likewise with the seven calamities, the seven eyes, everything. So like the seven days of the week, the sevens speak of a full cycle and a satisfactory accomplishment. Keep that in mind. Hence, always like to use that word when I can. Great opportunity here today. Hence, six is one short of seven. And because of that, it suggests a falling short of satisfaction. Now, I had a verse from Romans. Did you hear that? A falling short. Six falls short of seven, doesn't it? It's so close and yet so far. It's six. It's not seven. It's six, seven. It's seven, six. No, but it's one short. Kind of like the price is right. You had to guess the retail price of the item without going over it. If you go over it, you automatically lose. So you have to stay just under it, just under it. So you're not going to overplay your hand. Likewise, Satan and the man of lawlessness, not going to go one over seven, going to go just short of seven. So it's a falling short. Let's see if I still have this verse here. Yes, I do. Paul to the Romans, chapter three, verse 23. For all sinned and are wanting of the glory of God. Wanting, falling short. All have sinned and are wanting of the glory of God. Uh, it doesn't matter, you've heard this taught, and it's true, it doesn't matter how good you are. Everyone, according to Paul, this is the foundation of the gospel, it's really the leading up point to the gospel. Some people are better than others. There are people who just don't sin much. Other people sin for, as a career. Uh, you're still short. In fact, it's even more deceiving to be just short. That's why six is the most deceptive number, because it's just short. It's so damn close to seven, but it's not seven. Is six seven? Is seven six? I asked you that question a minute ago. I reposed the question. No, but it's the closest thing to it. And thus, it's really an imitating number. It's a number that really wants to be seven, but it just isn't seven. It's vanity. Man is given six days over the eon, 6,000 year periods to do his work. Adam tilled the garden. We're all doing our work. On the seventh day, we realize, uh, this was the lesson of the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day, you're supposed to realize that without God, all of your efforts are futile. Yeah, there's a verse in the Psalms, salvation from a human is futile. Don't know where it is. Read all the Psalms. You'll find it. Salvation from a human is futile. This is to be reflected upon on the Sabbath day, on the day of rest. But if you never get to the Sabbath day, then you're stuck in day six, and you think this is it, this is it, this is it, six, 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 get it? This is it, six, 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 you never get there. Israel, every seventh year, they were supposed to have a sabbatical year. It, number seven again, satisfaction. They were supposed to rest the fields, take a break for a year. Do you know what faith that required of them? Lots of faith. They couldn't do it because they felt that they had to get their fingers in the pie all the time. And and so they could not rest. And so they ignored uh, 70 years of Sabbaths. And these became the 490 years of Israel. They were in Babylon for one year for every year they missed the Sabbath. So, you know, when you don't rest, when you don't stop, I should say, and reflect on your weakness and God's strength and God's capabilities, you miss the whole lesson of this. And the person or the system or the man who stays on six and keeps repeating the cycle of six, this re re repetition of six is, in my opinion, the 
repeating of a cycle. Six, six, six. You keep, when you get to six, when you count, what, what do you do? You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's normal. Nobody's blaming anybody for struggling for six days and resting the seventh. Nobody's blaming anybody for the 6,000 years of rule followed by the seventh. Just go on, five, six, seven. But when you think that you can operate a system of government or a system of anything apart from God, then you have stopped at six. And this is what it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, six. Are you kidding me? You know, Paul said, after he received that thorn in the flesh, he said, um, I had besought the Lord three times to take this away from me, and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Three times. I think there's a significant parallel there. Three times, ask the Lord, the Lord says no. Three times. Man, man, man. I'm not sure, I can't tell you what every one of those things specifies. I don't know whether one six means one period of human history, another six means another period, another six means another period. I don't know. But I do think that it is a it is a it's symbolic of a repetition of a thing. Like you keep hitting your head on the ceiling and you think it's gonna work. We're looking for nirvana. We're looking for the perfect government, the perfect society, and we bang our head against the ceiling. Bang! We can't get to heaven. We can't get to heaven. We try again with another form of government. Boom! Can't get to heaven. Boom! Can't get to heaven. After three times, God's shutting it down. After three times of six, God is shutting it down. Six, six, six. That's it. He's going to destroy the whole human system. Uh, the present human uh, system. Same with Paul. He hit the ceiling. He besought the Lord three times. I believe he would have asked the Lord 300 times, but the Lord cut him off after three times. That's enough. I'm getting tired of hearing about it. So you're done. You're done, kid. You're done, Paul. We're finished. We're moving on here. My grace is sufficient for you. You're not getting anywhere, kid. But we are going on. And the number eight, oh my Lord, the number eight is a number of a regeneration. It's a number of resurrection. It's a number of a new beginning. So not only am I not going to let you get stuck on 666, ooh, 666, it's not spooky, People put it on dark things at Halloween. It's supposed to be this zombie-like Satan uh, creature, 666. But again, 666 is a number of humanity. And humanity is trying to be perfected apart from God, but it's always going to fall short. It's always going to be wanting of the glory of God. And as good as it's going to get, and as good as it's going to look, it's going to be one short. And there's three of them for the stupidity of the repeated effort. They say that, the definition of insanity is to do the same things all the time, expecting a different result. 666, the result is always the same. It's always failure. It's always disappointment. So God is encouraging Israel to move on into this, the day of rest, the day of stopping, the Sabbath day. Gave it to them one day a week in order to get them used to the idea. Gives them a giant stopping time, the thousand year kingdom. That's going to be wonderful. The hitting the head on the ceiling is finally going to stop. As for us, we're not six or seven. Baby, we're eight. We're a new creation. We're, a, we're already spiritually into the regeneration. Not physically, but spiritually. This is heavy duty truth. And there's plenty more where that came from.